Hello, you're watching the AI Native Telco Summit. I'm Guy Daniels. Now, the volume of announcements around Gen AI is matched only by the intensity of interest from the public and organizations. But how can telcos benefit and does Gen AI really have a role to play in the workplace? With the imminent general release of Microsoft 365 Copilot, we may be about to find out. So I am delighted that joining me now is Marie-Hélène Briensware, who is Vice President Workplace Together at Orange Business. Marie-Hélène, very good to see you. Can you first of all tell us about the involvement of Orange Business in the Microsoft 365 Copilot early release program? Yes, um, thank you very much, uh, Guy. Um, so um, 600 organizations roughly around the world have been selected by Microsoft to take part in this uh, early access program for Microsoft 365 Copilot. And Orange Group, we are, we are very lucky to be uh, one of these organizations. Um, as um, a member of Orange Business, I look after the rollout of this preview for the whole of Orange Group. Uh, for two reasons. One is because we are a very large organization and we have a, a huge diversity of jobs um, with an orange group or a telco, so which means we have shops, we have field engineers, we have contact centers, salespeople, marketing people, so on and so forth. And uh, I'm part of Orange Business, which means I'm also highly interested of understanding you know, how things are going to pan out for Orange, because we know that lots of large organizations are going to face exactly the same questions. Uh, when they need to choose uh, which generative AI to go for in particular, are they going to go for Microsoft 365 Copilot? So what did Orange Business have to do to be able to participate? What did you need to put in place in terms of perhaps data access and security to participate in this program? Well, the, the first thing is uh, you have to be selected by Microsoft and we're very lucky um, to, to, to be. Um, we're both a very good um, customer of them, but also a good partner uh, because we uh, help them sell their solutions to organizations. So I guess that's one of the first thing is, is uh, to be, um, um, to have a, a good healthy relationship with Microsoft, which we have. But then obviously um, when we got through that sort of uh, process of being selected and we got offered the uh, possibility to take part in this um, early access program, uh, we had to get ourselves ready. and. Um, the first thing it's actually really interesting to to see is that um, you know we've come a long way I think in organisations, especially in Europe, in terms of data privacy, um, you know compliance with all sorts of regulation, including GDPR, and so that was by far the first content everybody asked us. Um, are we sure that you know because we've heard that ChatGPT, uh, when you put your information in there, it might be used by them to um, enrich or improve their model? So. What about you know uh, those business informations or customer data that we may use in, in this um, generative AI in, in Microsoft 365 Copilot? Was that going to be um, you know sent somewhere um, outside of Europe? Who was going to be able to have a look at it and so on and so forth? So that's really the first challenge we had, and we did two things um, to uh, get ready for this. The first one is um, along with other European customers, we worked with Microsoft to um, get. Um, or everything ready in terms of compliance with our um, data privacy and security rules, and in particular uh, uh, compliance to GDPR. Uh, that translates in particular with the data um, residency in the EU, and also uh, matching all the security aspects of the rest of the uh, Microsoft 365 solution. So that was uh, on Microsoft's part, um, you know, the best guarantee we can have that we're going to be compliant with. Um, um, what we need to be compliant with, and, and importantly, using the policies that we already have in place. And then internally, we also had to um, explain, uh, raise awareness, um, and actually uh, we did that by uh, creating a little charter that we asked all the testers to sign that really was explicit about you know, wh where the data is going, that it's safe, that it's fine, um, but also explaining to testers what was expected from them in terms of testing, in terms of our spend, uh, giving feedback, so on and so forth. So that's kind of how uh, we got uh, ready. Um, uh, we also had to select a few, uh, not a few, but select all the testers that were going to take back. And I can tell you that um, it was an interesting process because lots of people were really keen to be part on the, on the preview, but obviously we had a, a limited number of licenses. 
Um, so we got everything ready and we actually kicked off um, the preview properly with everybody um, earlier in mid-September. It sounds like it was an absolutely fascinating process, uh, a lot of questions asked as a result of this, but what are your main takeaways now from the co-pilot tests? So it's important to say that the tests are still ongoing um, and there is a learning curve. As I said, we started testing properly with all the testers um, about a month ago. Um, we've already seen lots of, uh, of evolution in the way people use um, Copilot and use natural language, because this is obviously what we're looking at, is how people are comfortable using natural language, how do they use it, what are the use cases uh, they find value in. Um, so this is very much uh, still work in progress. But one thing I can say um, already is that people are really, really interested. Um, and we've had lots of enthusiasm. People really wanted to start and test, and we have um, we have a community of testers, and it's incredibly active. It's just honestly, it's really great part to be to be. It's great to be part of it and see um, people really trying things, exchanging, helping each other. Um, also, sometimes sharing funny, you know, funny stories of uh, funny results they got for, through the AI. Um, so it's generally speaking uh, a very positive. Um, um, endeavour to be part of. Uh, I just think it's just a really nice impact already on people. That's really good to hear. Um, let's step back a second. You know, why is this of interest to Orange Business? What's the potential application of generative AI for a service provider such as Orange Business? So, um, the, the way we all work uh, and the way we do business, all of us, any country, any organisation, is going to be changed by AI in general, and at the moment, uh, arguably by generative AI. Microsoft 365 Copilot is one of uh, the ways of using the amazing GPT technology. So, as you know, embedded in the Microsoft uh, suite of applications. Um, so, what we're looking at is understanding, um, as I said, first for us, and with the idea that what's going to work for us is also going to work for our customers. So, understanding sort of the most valuable use cases. Um, is it that some job roles um, get more out of Copilot than others? Is it that suddenly there's this you know, amazing reason to use it that saves so much time and we want everybody to know about it and use it? So that's that's the first thing I think uh, we're, we're trying to, um, to really pinpoint is those use cases. And we know that, it, again, because of this diversity of job roles that we have within Orange Group, if they work for us, they're going to work for loads of organizations around the world. So that's what we aim at doing at Orange Business. We aim at um, supporting customers in uh, making the best of um, any workplace tools really, but in particular Microsoft 365 Copilot, by um, helping people get to grips with it. You know, the adoption curve, there is an adoption curve and it's 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 not, you have to manage it like, like every tool. Um, so helping customers do that, making sure um, that they're ready for it in terms of um, obviously security, but also data quality, data governance, because you, you know what we say, AI, the result of an AI is only as good as the data you put into it. So if your data is not there, um, if you haven't got much in the cloud, for instance, you will probably not make much out of, of Copilot. So getting ready for it, adoption and understanding those use cases uh, that are going to bring the most value to our customers, that's what we're doing. And, and finally, Marilyn, this is a, a very fast moving sector. So what is the next step for Orange Business in terms of its use of LLMs, large language models? We are looking at several, um, several of such models. Um, I guess the other one we're currently looking into is um, um, Azure OpenAI, which also is, is based on the same, I'm going to LLM as, as Copilot, which is GPT. Um, it's it's used in slightly different ways. We believe it's going to be useful for other use cases. So maybe just to explain what what this means is uh, everybody knows what ChatGPT looks like. You know, you, you go onto your uh, browser, you go into um, onto that URL, and then you have a chat, and you can ask ChatGPT all sorts of things, and it will produce uh, text or other contents to to answer your queries and your prompts. You can, but the thing is, uh, this is uh, uh, potentially not suitable for um, organizations, businesses because um, that data uh, is not necessarily secured. And I know there is um, obviously a paying option of ChatGPT to protect um, enterprise data, but some large organizations like, like us and like many of our customers, we're quite keen to you know, keep everything inside our own cloud and our own tenant and, and possibly in our own regions as well. 
So um, you, you can do that with um, Azure Open AI. You have your sort of own private GPT, if you wish, open to the um, to, to the employees of the company. It's very safe. And we, we are looking as well at sort of other use cases that will be uh, well served by um, uh, but by, by Azure Open AI. But I'm going to say, as you said, it's a very, very fast evolving world. Um, other companies are pushing a lot um, to get their model uh, through onto the market. We see lots of startups that have really great ideas. Um, so we, we're keeping an eye on, obviously, on all of this. And I'm also, I would like to say, it's not just about generative AI and LLMs. AI is a lot more than, than, than that. Um, LLMs are really impressive because you have this I'm going to say impression that you have an AI that can speak, that can understand you and, and, and reply to what you're asking. But what we call narrow AI is also amazing for all sorts of use cases. So it's not just, again, it's not just about generative AI and we have um, all sorts of data and AI teams looking at the best use of AI across organization. And again, you know, what works for us is going to be really interesting for our customers too. Absolutely. Great points. Well, we must leave it there. Mary Len, thank you very much indeed for joining us and sharing your insights today. Thank you very much, Guy.